So we're going to change our fuel injectors today. Fuel injectors are a service item and they do get dirty and the spray patterns will change. They can also leak and drip and which will cause some engine codes. Now this set we're doing today is just from a service standpoint. The car has 135,000 miles on it. It is a BMW 2007 328 XI. So first we're going to take off the back section here and our cabin filter and this is going to get us access to get our plastic engine cover off. So I'm just going to pop that. And to pull this cover off, there's two screws. So we have one screw here, and there'll be one screw on the other side. Okay, before we lift up on that cover, we need to slide our that spool cable down, and then there'll be a second loom underneath. And that one will sometimes slide out, but sometimes it gets stuck. So I just open those little retainers there. And then we can lift up and it'll just slide on out. Okay, the last screw for this is kind of hidden down here. So this is our fuel injector rail right here that runs along and we've got our fuel line fitting that's right here. Now if you've been running the car this is going to be under pressure and it's going to be like 80-85 pounds so we have to be careful how we release that pressure. Right here is a small service part and this has got a Schrader valve in there and I'll screw a hose in there put it into a container so I can dump the pressure. The other thing to pay attention to, these are the O2 sensors. Do not mix up these plugs. They are specific front and rear, and if you mix them up, it'll do some weird stuff to the engine computer, may even set a code. They are the same plug, so you gotta be careful. To unplug these, we've just got a little plastic piece at the back. We wanna just squeeze it and pull them apart. Just like that. I'm going to lay this harness over here. Then this is just clipped on to the fuel rail. So we should be able to pop it off without too much effort. Just got to be careful that you don't snap the little clips. So to release this, I'm going to take the Schrader valve off and just set the cap to the side. I'm going to use my fuel pressure gauge just because it has a drain feature on it. When you screw it in it's going to have some pressure and lose some fuel. Then I'm just going to stake my small glass beaker and I'm probably not going to get a lot of fuel in there. So I'm just squeezing the pressure release on my fuel pressure gauge to drain that fuel. So the bolts that hold in the injector rail, we have one, two, three, and four. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to loosen these bolts first and then we need to disconnect this plastic thing holds the plugs for the injectors. So I'm going to take the bolts out first. That'll let me kind of tilt it back a little bit and then we'll pop off the connectors.
Okay, there's still gonna be some fuel, residual fuel pressure. So I'm just gonna take a sharp towel and cover this fitting. And then the release mechanism is right here. So you have to squeeze this line forward, press this little blue piece in, and push it back off. And you can see we got still quite a bit of pressure there. And that little blue piece will stay with that fitting. But all you're doing is you're pushing a little spring that'll release the clip and allow it to pop over. Okay, so now our rail is loose. We've just got to disconnect our electrical connectors. So down inside here, we've got a little metal clip. And what we need, push the clip to the side and that'll allow us to lift up on the injector. And we've got to keep moving down and that'll disconnect the plug from the injector. So I'm just going to keep pressure up and work my way down until each one pops up. Okay. So with it unplugged here, I can kind of pull that harness back and that's going to give me room to pop up on our fuel rail. So the fuel rail is just a push fit. There are O-rings on the bottom. Sometimes I find if you can kind of wiggle the injectors a little bit, it'll help break it free. I'm just using a shop towel and I'm lifting up on my fuel rail and you can see how we've popped up pretty much most of the way down. And that's our rail of injectors. So now we've got the fuel rail out to get our injectors off. There is just a little clip and I'm going to push that clip up and it's going to slide off. Then there's just a rubber o-ring. Now small fuel is going to come out of the rail. I've just got a sharp towel there. And I'm just going to rotate it. Sometimes the o-ring can get pretty stuck in there, especially if they've been in for a long time and we're just going to pop it out like that. So I'm just going to take the rest out the same way. So our service fuel injectors came with new O-rings, top and bottom. So I'm just going to use a little bit of silicone grease just to kind of lubricate these. And you don't need a lot. Definitely no sealers go here. And then we're going to take our injector, paying attention to the electrical connector facing away from the Schrader valve. And we're just going to slide that in. And the way that these clips work is they have a little slot that locates in a slot in the injector. So we just want to make sure that everything slides together and when that clip pushes on you'll hear it snap. So now I'm going to put my serviced injectors in and we'll put it back in the car. So I had to move the clips around a little bit just to make sure that they lock in. They've got to lock in on the, both the rail and right on the last groove on the fuel injector. 
So we just want to make sure that they're all in nice and tight. Now when it's in the car it is kind of clamped down but these can move further up so I just wanted to make sure they're all locked in and heard, of, heard the clip snap. Okay before I put my injectors back in I want to clean out the holes. A little bit of debris has gotten down in there on each one so I'm just going to vacuum that out with a, vacu with a shop vac and then wipe it out with a clean shop towel. I have lubricated all of my o-rings with a little bit of silicone grease just to help them slide in. Be careful when you clean the holes. Um, I wrapped a shop towel around a screwdriver but be careful it doesn't break through and scratch because otherwise we can damage the o-rings. So to install, I'm just going to line everything up, line up my injectors and they will literally just push fit down into the hole, wiggle them down until the metal bar contacts and then I'm going to take my fuel line, push it on, and we should hear an audible click right there, and then I pull back to make sure it's on nice and tight. Next, I'm going to take my wiring harness. Now, I've already reset my clips and got them so they're in together like this because they hold the injector on either side, right here. And I'm just going to line up all of my fuel injectors and just work down the line making sure they all push in and are a nice tight fit onto each connector. Okay. Now all we have to do is put our bolts back in and reassemble the rest of the car. So the last things I'm going to do is put my little plastic retainer back on the fuel rail and plug in my O2 sensors again. And then these sensors will just lock into those little plastic clips. Alright, before I put all the plastic covers back on, I want to make sure I start the engine, make sure I don't have any fuel leaks, and make sure everything is just fine before we cover it all back up with the plastic. So before I start the car, I'm going to reset the fuel trims in the engine computer. This is going to bring everything back to a zero standpoint, so once we start driving with new injectors, the engine computer will relearn its fuel trims. So the last thing I'm going to do is just check over, make sure I don't have any fuel leaks and then I'm going to reassemble the rest of the car again, put all the plastic shields back on and go out and drive the car. When it first starts up after changing the injectors, it may run a little rough at first. You've got to get fuel pressure into the rail again because that's all been purged and the car's adaptive system will need to relearn. So there may be a slight period where it runs a little rough. So I've got all the car back together. I got all the uh, plastic trim on, valve covers on, our cabin filters back on. So now I'm going to go out and drive it. And I want to drive it for about 25 to 30 minutes, varying conditions. That way the engine computer can relearn its fuel uh, adaptives. So thanks for watching. Make sure to hit the subscribe and the like button if you liked what you saw and we'll put some links in the bottom to where we bought our fuel injectors from.